Turning your at-home gadgets into POE is easier than you might think. Stay tuned to see how I transformed my apartment into a POE living space for the holidays. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. And if you're new, then thank you for joining. A lot of us have been stuck at home this year, so what better way to fill your time than with some fun POE DIY projects? Whether you're safely seeing loved ones or staying at home this holiday season, I'm going to show you how simple and accessible it is to power some of your favorite gadgets with power over ethernet. In this video, I'm powering a Bluetooth speaker, LED strip lights, a security camera, a smart home hub, and even a smart watch charger. Let's get started. The switch I'm using as a power source for all my devices today is the GATS 10-8-55V120W. It's an eight port PoE switch for 802.3 AF or AT applications. It has two uplink ports for gigabit data and a power budget of 120 watts. This switch has a built-in power supply, so to power it on, all you have to do is connect the AC cord to the back of the unit. My router is my data source, and this is where I have a central wall outlet, so I'm placing my switch close by. Once I bring input data to the switch, the uplink LED light is solid green. The first device I'm powering is going to be a Nest Cam IQ. To power this using power over Ethernet, I'm using our GAT USB C Rev2 splitter. It converts 802.3 AT PoE into the various USB C power delivery profiles with separate data output. The Nest Cam IQ requires 15 volts, 15 watts over USB C, and wired data isn't needed since the Nest uses Wi Fi. I set mine on top of my fireplace so that I can monitor my dog when I'm not home. Once I get that solid blue ring around the camera, I know my connection is solid. The next non-POE device I'm going to power is the charger for my Apple Watch. This charger provides 5 volts and uses a standard USB Type-A connector. For this connection, I'm using our GAF USB splitter. This converts 802.3 AF PoE into 5 volts 10 watts of power. I will then use the included cable adapter since I need to go from 1.35 mm DC to USB type A. Once I connect the cable to the splitter, my watch can rest on the base and start charging. Next up is my Amazon Fire TV stick. This requires 5 volts, 5 watts over micro USB. It's important to know that mine is a first generation Amazon Fire. Newer versions might require different power. Since this is also a 5 volt device, I get to use the same splitter, just with a different cable adapter. For this connection, I'll use the 1.35 to micro USB cable adapter that's included in the GAF USB kit. Both splitter LED lights turn on once it's connected to my PoE switch. After I power the stick with my PoE splitter, I'll connect it back to the HDMI port on my TV. Now all my streaming options are ready to go. Now to power my Bluetooth speaker. This is a wireless speaker, but I'm going to charge it using power over ethernet. My speaker is another 5 volt micro USB device, so I'm using the GAF 5 volt 10 watt again with the micro USB adapter. The red LED on my speaker indicates that it is in fact charging, and the blue light on the front shows that it can be powered on at the same time, so I can still use it. The next thing I'm going to power is one of my favorites. I bought some LED strip lights to stick behind my TV. I think it looks pretty cool, and I like that I can change the color depending on what I'm watching, or just how I want the room to look. 
these lights require 12 volts DC to the sensor. For this voltage, I'm using our GAT 12 volt 25 watt splitter. It converts 802.3 ATPOE into 12 volts 2.08 amps. Once again, we see the LED lights turn on and stay lit solid once it's connected to a compatible power source. The barrel size of the DC splitter connection is 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter. This is the most common size for 12 volt devices and it does match up with my light strip sensor. As soon as I provide power to the sensor using PoE, I can change the colors with my remote. The last device I'm going to power is a Google Wi-Fi puck. I personally don't need an additional Wi-Fi router in my apartment, but this is a commonly used device, so I wanted to show that it can be powered using PoE. This device takes 5 volts, 9 watts over USB-C and has a LAN port for input data. I'll power it using our GAT USB-C Legacy Splitter, which is the GAT 5 volt 20 watt and a 2.1 to USB-C cable. The splitter itself is capable of 20 watts output and is powered by 802.3 AT PoE. It passes through gigabit data on the separate female RJ45 connector. The blue LED light across the router lets you know that it is receiving power. Since I'm bringing in wired data to the Google device, I will be using the data output port on the splitter. The last step is to connect the other end of my category cable into the LAN port of the Wi-Fi router. Now I have an apartment full of everyday devices that I'm powering from a single PoE switch. I only used one standard electrical outlet to power the switch, then from there I was able to power six separate devices from that one source. Be sure to check out our other videos to see what else you can power with PoE. That does it for today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see me do more videos like this, let us know by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit that bell icon, that way you don't miss out on our new uploads. And if you have a PoE project you want to see us do, leave us a comment down below. Be sure to check out our other channels too. We post to Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and now Amazon. See y'all next time and have a very happy holiday.